just the last few things on the on the scope here. So let's say we decided to declare two variables here. Double e and equals and equals something else. Well, if I go to compile this here, it'll say there's a redefinition. There's multiple initial initial black initializations. Well, that's that's not legal. We can't do that in C++, and the compiler will stop here. However, if we make two different variables, or actually the same variable in two different scopes. And then uh, we go to compile this here. The program will run here. Okay. Well, let's say I use a calculation, or let's say I output E here. It's going to output 2.718. And that's uh, fairly obvious here, because there's only one variable that's been declared. Right here, if I declare it, we already know that this variable here does not exist to this guy here. So it's still, we're still going to output 2.718. Now what's not so obvious here will be if we decided to output right here. Well in this case, <clears throat> E exists twice. Well, what's the compiler going to do? It's still going to run it. Well, what, what happens is it'll always print out the E or use the E that's most local here. Between these two here, this is the most local E here. Right in here, since they, there's two variables that have the same name here. If I made another variable here, let's say I made another difference. If I made a, a new scope here, remember uh, this is a. There's no local e in here, but the most local e happens to be right in here, <clears throat> and the most global e happens to be way over here. Well, if I if I go to print this out here, it'll always print the most local e out. To the screen. Okay, here, let me undo here, see if I have a, a couple calculations here. Yeah, alright, that's because I want to go back to the uh, what I had before. Okay, let's say I delete this here. Now, if I'm right here, now, what I mean, I can I don't have to just print stuff out to the screen here. I can actually use calculations. I can say a times pi, and then divided by e. I can use all those calculations that are within the scope. And um, you know, uh, <clears throat> this brings up the question: Why would I? Why would I ever want to make different scopes like that? Well, we generally we don't just make scopes like that on our own. They just happen to occur. So if I were to make a for loop here, if I made i and t x is equal to 7 here, comma, now notice I, I can make multiple variables right in here. y is equal to 5. I don't know if I've gone over that. z equals 3. And I can say, I can make an I can make a condition. While well, x is greater, well x is less than uh, y times z or something. And I can say x is equal to x plus y. You know, I can have some fancy for loop here. And basically, let's just say this does stuff. You know, it could do anything here. Let's just say, you know, it might print stuff to the screen, but but the point is here, if I try to uh, 
output stuff here to the screen here, we'll have a scope visibility problem here. So these things will just naturally occur. So anytime I make a set of braces here, I'm already within a different I'm already in a different set of scope here. So this whole time we've been use we've been creating scopes. And you might not have, you may have not realized that. So anytime we made an if statement way back in lesson I don't even know what lesson. You know, this is this really was a, a separate set of scope. This is a different variable here. This was, oh, this is just a different scope. It was a brand new scope here, but we never really needed to bring up the issue until we started talking about the for loops here. And we really need to talk about it when we start talking about functions in the next tutorial. So that was the, uh, so that, that's, that just wraps this tutorial up here. That we can't declare two variables with the same exact name in the same scope like this. This is illegal. It's bad. It can't happen and the compiler won't let it happen. But we can make two different variables with the same exact name in different scopes. And that is legal. And that's going to happen. And we'll see that later on when we get used to this scope thing it'll actually keep our lives much much easier because going back to one of these here if I have all if let's say I had a thousand variables here you know I when you start writing more complex programs you're gonna have you're gonna have variables all over the place and um, you know if you start to uh, write some programs you know you'll, you'll you'll have a thousand variables to keep track of here and there's a good chance that you'll miscalculate and you might think you're using one a variable from one scope but it might be actually be being might be executed in a different scope which will cause some problems here and then eventually we're gonna have you know you might have over a hundred lines of code all at the same time and um you know, there's going to be all the stuff that's going on, but there's a ways to manage it. And one of those ways is to start using a scope. So we can only look at a certain amount of variables here. And it'll keep our lives easy. And then we're also going to talk about functions, which will also keep things pretty. It's, an, it's a really good way to organize our code. So that's this tor that's it on this tutorial here. And um, consider this, well... And yeah, we'll just go on to the next tutorial and we'll see how we do. So hopefully the scope thing is starting to make sense. If it doesn't make sense, that's alright. Because that's just one of those things that we're going to develop. But uh, we're going to be using it probably throughout the rest of the tutorials.